Hi, this is Dr. Stephen Jones, and I'm here to look at Excel solutions for four problems at the end of Chapter 2. We're going to look at problems 14, 17, 21, and 22. And what you have before you right at the moment is uh, problem number 14. Problem number 14 just looks at trying to get a... Um, a probability distribution up there for you to be able to answer a couple of basic questions. The problem itself reads, a student taking Management Science 301 at East Haven University will receive one of the five possible grades for the course, A, B, C, D, or F. The following distribution of grades over the past two years is as follows. And you see those numbers right there repli replicated. If this past distribution is good indicator of future grades, what's the probability of a student receiving a C in the course? Well now, let me tell you. If it was by random that we assigned grades, then this problem would seriously be able to tell you just what your chance of getting a grade in a course would be. Obviously that's not the case. What's the chance of a student getting a C in the course? Well, What's the student doing? <laughs> Are they doing their homework? Are they always there? Etc. But, okay, so we assume that they're looking at random chances. What's the likelihood that any one student that might have their record pulled out would have a C in this course? And so over the last two years, this shows how many students got an A, B, C, D, or F, and so if we at random selected a student's record, what would the likelihood be that they got a C? Okay. So, this is how you do it in Excel. It's not that difficult, but we are going to create a formula for each of these cells right here, and that set of formulas should add up to one because the probability of all of each different uh, possible solution, uh, the sum of all of those right there should equal a total of one. So, equals, that's how we're starting the formula here. The equals symbol, click on the one that we're trying to find the probability for in this cell, that's students getting an A. Divide that by the total number of students. Now, so that I don't have to continually write this formula out, I'm going to show you something. If you hit the function for key at the top, not the letters F and 4, but the function for key at the top of your keyboard, you'll notice that it puts a dollar sign before the B and before the 7 in this formula. That means that as we copy this down here, you're going to see it actually leave this B7 alone and all of these will be divided by B7 and I won't have to write it in hand by hand by hand. Now I'm going to show you what would happen here if I didn't do that. So we'll start this formula over. Divide by B7 because we 80 out of the total number of 300. If I hit enter here then it gives me a number. And we're going to make that a three digit number right there. Okay. So as we do that, if I start going down here and just copy it all the way through, it's going to give me this. Why? Because this one's divided by B7, this one's divided by B8, which is nothing. So you can't do that. So instead, I will hit the F4 when I've highlighted that B7. That changes that now to where it sticks as B7. 
So now, when I copy it down, each one of these also is divided by B7. See, you can see that in those formulas. If you then sum all of those together, you get the one like I said that it should. If you were to sum all those probabilities and you did not get one, you've made a mistake somewhere. The question now for number 14 was, what is the probability of a student receiving a C in this course? And that is point three zero zero or a thirty percent chance. Number two seventeen. We need to look again at probabilities. Let me read two seventeen. Evertype, a leading manufacturer of quality nails, produces one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, and five inch nails for various uses. In the production process, if there is an overrun or the nails are slightly defective, they are placed in a common bin. So if they produce too many of them, or if they're just a little bit defective, they go into a common bin. Yesterday, 651 of the 1 inch nails, 243 of the 2 inch nails, 41 of the 3 inch nails, 451 of the 4 inch nails, and 333 of the 5 inch nails were placed in the bin. Either they don't make very many 3 inch nails or they're really good at making 3 inch nails because they actually had about one sixth as many defects or overruns of 3 inch nails as they did the next closest or next least defective which was the 2 inch nails. But in any case, that's besides the point. Your first question is, what's the probability of reaching into the bin and getting a four inch nail? Well, if you reach into the bin, my first hope is that you don't stick your finger, okay? That you don't hit a nail in the wrong spot and hurt yourself. But, just like we did with 214, we're going to create ourselves a formula. Equals, select 651, which is the number of one inch nails divided by and the 1719 and you remember that we hit the function 4 key so that when we copied this going down we would not have a problem with dividing by zero or other factors out there we want it all to be divided by B7 and so let's change this again to a number a three digit number and we can just copy down so the question first question is what's the chance of getting a, a four inch nail and that would be 0.262 what's the problem a uh, probability of getting a five inch nail and that's 0.194 then C is if a particular application requires a nail that is three inches or shorter. What is the probability of getting a nail that will satisfy the requirements of the application? So what we want to know is what's the chance of getting three inches or shorter? So it's the probability of getting a one inch plus the probability of getting a two inch plus the probability of getting a three inch. Now, there are a couple of ways of doing this. One of the ways is, remember, we wanted to make sure that all the probabilities were one. So if you sum this up, you get a one here. One of the ways to do this is to say that you would take equals 1 minus the ones that you don't want. Okay. The other way 
would be to actually add up the, the probabilities of these three that you do want. Oops. And unamazingly, they're the same thing. That's because this is a one, and that's what you expected to do. All the things together is going to be one. So, if you wanted to say that you did not want the fours and fives, then the probability becomes 0.544. And if you wanted only the probabilities for 1, 2, and 3, then it's still 0.544, whichever way you attack this problem. I know that I said it was 14, 17, 21, and 22. We're going to come back to 21 and 22 in the next video. See you soon.